Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm going to give this uh, short talk on human self and critical thinking. And at the end, I will uh, say something that how can Idara through Islam benefit out of it. The talk has following parts. First, I'll define critical thinking and then go through human self and its constituents, i.e., for example, what defines me as an individual, multi self concepts, some models, critical thinking, three stages of its development, some permanent values, application to Tulu Islam, and conclusions. Critical thinking is defined as the art of analyzing and evaluating all aspects of thinking with a view to improving it. There are three levels of thought, lower order thinking, higher order thinking, highest order thinking. This talk has been taken, part of it is taken from uh, 28th International Conference on Critical Thinking. And I've given a reference at, at the bottom of this slide. Why critical thinking? Everyone thinks it is our nature to do so, but much of our thinking left to itself is biased, distorted, partial, uninformed, or downright prejudiced. Yet the quality of our life and that of what we produce, make, or build depends precisely on the quality of our thought. Shoddy thinking is costly both in money and in quality of life. Excellence in thought, however, must be systematically cultivated. So critical thinking is not something which we can learn in our day-to-day -day living. It needs a, a sort of a particular pattern or a particular style, or we have to make a deliberate effort to learn it so that we can apply it to our day-to-day -day problems as well as any spe special issues in our life or the job. The next slide is really shows the trend between when, when, a, when an organization is formed or we start some kind of a work together. And on, on, on the y-axis is value creation and the other side is the trust. So when people come together, they, are, they can be in, initially confrontational. This is a brainstorming stage. And this can be sorted out through some kind of value analysis management or, or coming together and, and, and looking at the problem. Then they become compliant and then they become cooperative. Then the next stage is being collaborative. And this is the stage where they become, start creating. So we should keep it in mind that uh, you can never reach the ultimate goal of co-creating suddenly it takes time because human beings take time to come together and understand. They only put in their best when they are fully convinced that what they are doing is in their interest. Now I will quote here a few, few phrases. And the first one is two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Mark Twain said it, most of us go to our graves with our music still inside us unplayed. Now this is an interesting part because if we look at the Quran, then this phrase will not hold true because factually we do not, our life does not end with our death. So the life goes beyond that. This is a big subject in its own right. Don't pursue happiness, instead pursue your goals happily. Easier said than done. A day is wasted if I have not done at least one good to someone else. Now this essentially means that we have to be fully aware of what we are doing every day in our life. And, and this is an important point because if we have failed to do something good in a day, then we have essentially not been positive on that particular day. I think therefore I am Next is we need to be remain aware in our life. We should be far more conscious than we normally are. For example, where exactly we are. Because if we know where we are, and then we figure out that where we wish to be, you know, there is a term used ideal self. So our existing self is a real self and ideal self. If our ideal self is something which we haven't figured out, then we won't know where we are going in our life. And of course, it will depend on the environment and the resources and opportunities available to us. But over here, if 
the aim is to develop ourselves, then the goal becomes easier because whatever we do, the bottom line is that I want to develop my own inner self. If we don't know where, if you don't know where you are going, any road will get you there. Lewis Carroll said it, and I thought this is a really nice phrase. Human self and tricks, what do we have? What is our self-concept? What are the psychological resources we have and how self-depletion takes place? And what are values relative and permanent? So this is, I'm going to put some, throw some light of my understanding about human self. Maslow's pyramid of needs, we, most of us are aware of it. There are four basic needs which are called the deficiency needs. First is physiological needs, safety needs, love, belonging, and esteem. And once these are met, are adequately met, should I say, then self-actualization one can think of and go beyond. If I'm hungry, I'm not going to read some book. First, I need to uh, fulfill my basic need. And that is why it is important that all those societies which wish their human beings are their members, they, they, they can actualize their own self. They have to meet these basic needs. And in self-actualization, we should remember that uh, I want to actualize my own self, but I should also enjoy helping others to actualize their, their self. And that is where the Quran helps us. It says that the one who wants to purify his own self, he must help others. He must uh, part with his possessions and wealth and help others. What do we have? We have a strong sense of identity called I. This remains unchanged throughout our life. We can check it. At any point in time, we will still feel as young as we used to be. So it doesn't change. Our sense of identity does not change. And we should also keep reminding ourselves that every human being in the world has the same strong sense of identity. It is only the experiences and the self they create in which we differ. But otherwise, as far as I is concerned, we all have that I. Our stock of emotions we have, which is positive and negative, our simple thinking, where we do not exert too much, our ability to think about thinking, which is called metacognition, our memory, which can have two parts, conscious and subconscious, our physical self, the selves of others, the other human beings, world as we see it, the world which we see it and the way I see it could be different from the view which somebody else might take it. This is sometimes very, very subjective. Beyond this world, the life of the hereafter of the I together with consciousness. Most people live this life as if this life will end with physical death. And obviously it has certain connotations. The, uh, this slide shows the interaction between human self and human body. So these are very intricately linked. Body is affected by its appearance, influence, social interaction, weather, climate, environment, everything. And then of course it, it affects our thinking. Whereas I also affects my own thoughts and my own desires and emotions. These also affect our body. So body has a very important role to play. But while we are meeting the needs of the body, we should also look at our inner I and self, our inner world, because that is where we, we, we take decisions. Next is on human free will. Whatever does not spring from a man's free choice or is only the result of instruction and guidance does not enter into his very nature. He does not perform it with truly human energies, but merely with mechanical exactness. This was written, uh, this was said by Willem von Humboldt in his uh, book on the limits of state action. And then he says, so when the laborer works under external control, we may admire what he does, but we despise what he is. We do not appreciate human value fully and consciously until we, we look into it critically and, and, and see every human being equal, just like our own self. And this is what the Quran does. Quran right at the beginning tells us that each one of you is born equal. When a child is born in the world, 
he or she is equal to any other child in the world. And a child doesn't know its gender, its uh, environment, its nationality, its status, his parents, his or her parents, religion, anything. It's just a child like any other child. And funny enough that when we die, we all die as equal. And that is interesting. We should keep that in mind and, 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 and live our life and then see how reality exposes itself before us. Basic emotions. I went through literature on, on psychology and, and the different people have defined our, our enumerated basic emotions differently, but most of them seem to agree on this. Happiness, sadness, anger, disgust, guilt, shame, surprise, and fear. And then I put down uh, all the emotions uh, I came across and uh, they, these are a lot. And uh, I just ended, you know, I've noted up to I, that is ignore. And uh, then the question is how many do ha we have? And remember, we all have, each emotion has its own shades. For example, we can be angry, we can be very angry, we can be very, very angry. And then we can be angry all our life. We must have seen people who are very critical and unhappy and negative. And similarly, we, we will see optimistic people and positive thinking people more hopeful. But again, it depends that how our needs are met and how we have goals in life. Thinking, this is what gives us, it gives us ability to question rational thinking, ability to create problems, ability to solve problems. Very interesting. We should, we should look into it that how, who are the people who are creating problems and who are the people who are solving problems. It gives us free will, which means choice. We can make a decision in our life and then, then live by the consequences of that choice. We have ability to make decisions, we have ability to create ourself. And once a self is created, then of course that self continues through our life, unless we decide to create a new self or a different self. Ability to use our emotions, ability to create, it helps to recognize and create desires. And then there are a lot more to it, we, we can figure it out. More on thinking, deliberate decisions become part of our self. Self-concept defines us at any point in time. We do not have any internal guidance. We do not have conscience. Conscience is internalized society. Whatever values we get from our parents, society and environment, that becomes our conscience. So that is why these are all relative standards. So there is no absolute standard of good and bad accept what we find it in the Quran. What is good for the self, that is good. What is bad for the self, that is bad. This is a separate subject. Individual level thinking. Each one of us wishes to maximize his, her happiness and minimize his, her pain. And obviously this will create problems and conflicts within a group. So we require some kind of rules as an external standard to avoid or minimize conflicts. Over here, I've taken some uh, slides uh, from, from Wikipedia. And what is my self-concept? This is one model where there are self-schemas that is different, uh, you know, scenarios and configurations of a human self. And is the past self, which we can recall. There's the present self, and then is the future self or the possible selves in the future. And, and it all depends on our thinking and our memory and what we want to bring forward. Then there is another concept or other uh, parts or constituents of it, for example, self-image, schoolwork, college, health, body, and mind fitness, friends, relationships, money, budget, possessions, other general influences, beliefs. If we ask anyone what what is, what is success in his life? You will see generally people will talk about status, money, holidays, family, children, friends. Hereafter and self-development uh, will rarely come into it. This is another very interesting model, which I thought I'll share with you, a socio-psychological self. This is what I am over here. So I can see my concealed self, the one which I don't want others to know, 
but I know about it generally. And the second is the open self, which I share with others. So others will make certain impression based on this open self. But others over here will also make an opinion about me, which is called blind self, but they will not let me know. And we do it. You know, that is where, uh, you know, talking after someone comes in and we can criticize him or her, but on their face, we just talk about the open self. And then there is this unknown self, which is not known to me over here and others over here. In fact, others also don't know about their own unknown self. So this is that self which, which we do not know. But Quran helps us to put all this together into one integrated self. And that is where the cognitive dissonance disappears. Now, next slide is interesting. What I've done is that one, one aspect of psychology is where they say that whatever we are at a point in time, that is what our self becomes. So emotive self, rational self, academic self, social self, religious self, DIY self, and obviously there is, there is a lot more to it. But over here, I have put down my thoughts in the light of the Quran that the self which we de develop based on after acquiring Iman in the Quranic uh, value system, then and manifest those divine attributes and try to remain or, or remain within the permanent values, then we get an integrated self. Now, this integrated self will be aware of all these statuses, but it will not turn itself into this. Of course, it, it will operate rationally using these values, and it will also act in the academic world and meet those requirements. But at the back of it will be this integrated self, which will be fully aware that what is going on in his or her life. This is the part of a separate talk, really. Variations in these concepts of the human self. This points to the limitation of the human intellect's ability to see reality. It only sees part of it. This is very interesting to note that as we live our life, we don't see complete reality of, of our own inner self and the reality of the world outside. So someone else should help us. And this is where the Quran comes in. And what Quran does is, that way he calls itself light. The Quran calls itself light. And the light helps us to expand the arena of vision of our intellect and consciousness. Just like a telescope increases the field of view of our, of our sight. Similarly, way he, what it does is it expands the arena or, or the sphere of understanding of our intellect. And we start seeing those things which we cannot see without way. He. The world which we see around us is the creation of pure human intellect. So this is the best human beings can create. They create one system, then they reject it, they move to the next one. And as a result, problems keep multiplying. And uh, why he helps us to understand and link this life with the next life. Some barriers to thinking, economic deprivation is a big barrier to our thinking. Social environment, you know, that imposes certain belief systems on us. Organizational environment, absence of desire, always done this way, attitude, beliefs, assumptions, wrong assumptions if we make in life, then, then we, we are in trouble. Emotions, which includes our prejudices, biases, social pressures, short-term gratification gains. Because we think, most of the people think life will end with death. That is why we must have uh, heard these terms. Uh, I've got only one life. I want to make best use of my life. And, and uh, his life was saved. Whereas we know death will come to everyone, but we still say his life was saved. Whereas we should say his life was a bit more prolonged to keep doing what he has been doing. Absence of education and training. Why should I think? Preference for status quo. If we are wealthy and powerful, then obviously we would like it to continue. Absence of incentives, busy life or perception. Our physical self, if we are too much into our physical self, then we are very much moved by gender, appearance, geographical affinity, its pleasures, 
very much into language as well, family, national identity, health and physical limitations, aging process, we are very conscious of it. Death, we are very conscious of it, but we don't want to talk about it. And then there are miscellaneous issues. Now, this slide shows different parts of psychological resources which we have at any point in time. This uh, equation I developed myself and I put down the three aspects of it. There are resources which are not in our control, which is shown in blue. There are partial control resources which are shown in red and green are those resources which are in our control. What it says is that at any point in time, each one of us have a certain bank of psychological resources. And if we are faced with a very difficult situation in life, for example, some grief, death of someone, war, or, or, or even, even you know, like pandemic, COVID-19, then if we have, we have enough psychological resource within us, then we can, face it successfully. But if we do not, then we will go into a deficit. And that is where then depression can set in. Now we go to critical thinking. There are three levels. At level one, lower order thinking is very unreflective. This is the state of most human beings. They live very unreflectively. If their needs are not met, then they are even worse. Low to mixed skill level, frequently relies on gut intuition, largely self-serving, self-deceived. Second level is where we start making deliberate decisions. We become a bit more aware of our environment. Probably this is the initial stages of, we can say, self-actualization. We are selectively reflective, high skill level, lacks critical thinking library, inconsistently fair. This is that level where, for example, if I'm doing a job, IT job, and when I'm in the job, then I'm more or less on this level. And once I go home, I revert back to the lower level. The highest order thinking is explicitly reflective, highest skill level, routine use of critical thinking tools in analyzing and assessing thinking consistently fair. And let me say that the Quranic level is higher than this level. This is where Quran wants us to be that higher than level three, where hereafter comes into it, the problems of other human beings come, come into it. We strive to minimize human problems and try to solve them. We are extremely aware at our consciousness level. So that is the level where, where the Quran wants to take us. Human intellect cannot take us here. We need the Quran's help. It's light to go over to the level four. This is the schematic representation of the same, which I have shown previously. Unreflective, then comes the challenge thinker. This is the state in which we live, most of us, you know, from a basic level to our job level and then revert back. But if we make an effort, we become practicing thinker and, and, and people like psychologists, philosophers, psychiatrists, and those people who have a slightly, again, it depends that how they look at the life themselves. Then there are advanced thinkers and master thinkers. It becomes a second habit. This is important. And this is that Quranic self which we get over here. This is a very high level which we can achieve right in this life. And that kind of a consciousness will then survive our death and will go to the next stage. What are values? Values are principles or standards of behavior. They influence our thinking and decision making individually as well as collectively. This can be an individual sense of right or wrong. Permanent values are those which never change. The first man had the same, the last man will have the same. Relative values, the world around us is based on relative values. These keep changing. These change from country to country. So the same human being, once he goes from one part of the earth to another part of the earth, he's subjected to different values. And that is wrong, that is injustice. So that is part of our critical thinking that we should look at it, that why are why as a human being I'm subjected to different man-made relative values. These are some of the values, the permanent values, which I would like to share with you. Respect as a human being, because we have free will and we think and we analyze and we feel humiliated as well as 
have a self esteem so by virtue of this every human being has an intrinsic respect and dignity we cannot insult any human being respect even if somebody has committed a crime we can hate the crime but we cannot hate the individual as a human being equality as i said earlier equality is absolute as a human being justice is again absolute no human being should be subjected to different justice system across the world that is injustice that is gross injustice and that is against the dignity of that human being so that is why the justice the values given in the quran are the ones which give true freedom this is a big subject in so right commitment to be honored if we have made a commitment to someone we must fulfill it if we cannot fulfill it then we must let them know internal accountability is inbuilt within us we like it or don't like it our self is directly proportional to what we do as we live our life we simply cannot escape it whatever course of a course of life we follow the consequences will be exactly proportional to that particular path or course which we have adopted warning it helps to address issues we must warn others and that is why ignorance of the law is an excuse in the quran so we must adequately warn others of the consequences of what they do promote good and forbid evil absolutely important if we don't do it then the world will become a very big hell human needs must be met if my needs are to be met as a human being since i am equal to others so others needs must be met as well and adequately so that they can carry out their own self actualization freedom of movement no one has the right no human being has the right to curtail the movement of another human being this earth belongs to every one of us for a short journey of life earth actually belongs to allah all the time so something which does not we do not own we don't have a right to occupy it as if it is our possession freedom of from fear this is a basic value and this can only be achieved under the system of deen with these kind of values if we establish a system then that fear will disappear as part of that system it's not something which we will be asked to make it disappear no it automatically disappears how to apply to tulu islam we should think critically acquire knowledge about the world where we are as a humanity humanity understand the issues facing humanity acquire good understanding of the quranic value system be part of the community of tulu islam and participate actively with all means we keep complaining that that uh, things are not fine but once it comes to opportunity and a platform is provided then we don't join in and we prefer to stay away from that see there is a contradiction there for example if a platform has been provided and we know it is based on the pure quran then what is preventing us from joining it only our desires that means if we say that there is nothing going on then then how do we expect allah himself is not going to come down to this life and and directly give us wahi or, or or some kind of a message to do it he has given the book the book is complete there is no messenger going to come and now it is our job to to follow it and we can only follow it yes initially we will follow it individually try to understand it and then if a platform has already been created then we should join into it and 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 contribute to it and and then develop ourselves so being isolated is not going to strengthen ourselves no way be positive and be very clear about the chronic aim and hold fast as stated in 3103 where allah says wa tasimu bihab lillahi jamia wa la tafarraq see the link between division and holding on to the rope if we hold on to the quran then we are not going to be divided if we are divided even within our own self within our own mind then we are not holding his rope and to hold that rope we have to hold it with others who are already holding that rope 
So Tulu Islam is one which claims that, that it is, it is uh, an organization based on the pure Quran. Remember, human life does not end with death. So we should keep that in mind all the time. Conclusions, our default position is emotive, which is transient in nature. Thinking provides us a tool to recognize our emotions and help resolve issues. So we need to improve our thinking and bring it up to that level four and beyond. Thinking does not cost anything except some internal desires and effort. Obviously, we will have to make those efforts. Self develops through helping other selves. Self-driven living is more productive because we are all the time conscious of it. And what is good for self is good. What is not good for self, that is wrong, that is evil. Permanent values help the self to understand other selves and stay connected with Tulu Islam. 